So I'm starting this vlog to talk through how I'm building my Gajiwino espresso maker mod. There's a lot of good information out there on the internet, um, but I wanted to make something that really kind of walks through the process of actually taking all the components and the build guide and actually making something that makes really delicious coffee. So if you're not familiar with what the Gajiwino mod is, it takes uh, the Gaja Classic or Gaja Classic Pro, which are decent entry level espresso makers and completely transforms them by adding an Arduino microcontroller. Uh, what it does is allows you to perfectly dial in your pressure and flow profile. Uh, you can get your temperature in a much more narrow band of uh, kind of an ideal uh, group head temperature. Um, and it even has expansion capabilities to add scales so you can have it turn off when you've reached exactly whatever your uh, your shot is. This is the first project of this type that I've ever done. We'll see how it goes, but um, it, so far in the process, uh, I've ordered all the materials that I need um, from AliExpress. I'll include links below. Uh, and they've come in. I've got the 3D printed component housings and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, it should be ready to go. The only limitation now is my ability to actually implement <laughs> this mod. If you're trying to replicate this, what I'm doing is called uh, the Lego build. Um, so that's taking individual components like uh, your dimmer, your two-part power supply, um, your relay, and then soldering them together and putting those in your component housing. Since then, uh, the Gajuino project has uh, done some group orders of a pre-made PCB. I didn't know about that until I started this project, so I'm going with the Lego build. Uh, but it's also a cool opportunity to learn how to actually build a uh, piece of hardware. So um, there's a really great Discord community and some good documentation, um, but this I hope to supplement with a video of walking through how it actually works. So hopefully by this time next week, I'll have an espresso maker that is going to make some really fantastic coffee. So what we have here is all of the components that will go into the Lego build ultimately. So this is the STM32 black pill. We have this soldered onto an expansion board. Some of the wires would be difficult to uh, solder to each of the holes. So what we did is solder these legs onto these female receptacle for the uh, board, which go onto these clamps. What this board does is link the board connection to the wires externally. This board just snaps in. Here. These are the header pins, and that's what's going to connect my ST link. So this goes to the computer, plug that in USB. I'm able to flash the board with the Gajuino software, so then it's going to be able to recognize and interface with all of the different sensors and other parts of this whole board. Some of the boards that you order may have these two grounds linked. We don't want that. So I had to like cut line that links the two uh, to break that connection. At the top here, this is the thermocouple. So it reads the temperature from the boiler and uh, then more precisely controls when to turn on and off the boiler so that your temperature remains constant uh, at the port filter. This is the sensor. This is going to screw into the boiler in place of the existing uh, sensor. These two wires are gonna connect in here. I had to desolder the header pins here so that we can solder wires directly into here uh, and then that will connect into the expansion board. Here we have the, it's a dimmer switch. This is used commercially in uh, light switches, like literally dimming, dimming lights. Um, but we use it here to control the cycles per second of the vibratory pump, which changes the pressure of the water delivered from the pump to the boiler. So did the same thing, removed the uh, existing header pins here, and then we're gonna solder wires from here into the board. Speaking of uh, pressure, we want to measure pressure. 
So uh, in order to do that, we are going to connect this pressure transducer. That's gonna go in, it's gonna kind of splice off of the tube that goes from the pump output. So we can live measure the pressure that's going to the coffee. This interface here is going to amplifying signal from this. This is the relay. What this does is open or close the solenoid to control water flow into the porta filter. So these two little boards are part of the power supply. So this takes the AC and turns it into DC 12 volt, and this steps the DC 12 volt down to DC 5 volt. We'll wire this directly into the power supply that's coming from the wall, and then um, this from there. This is called a snubber. It's connected in parallel to the relay to prevent overvoltage spikes when turning on and off the solenoid. Uh, now this is just a piece of strip board. In order to reduce the number of kind of janky connections, instead of taking all of the power, the five volt power and ground wires and all wiring them into a mess and or taping them together, we're gonna wire them into uh, two lines here and then bridge the connection. Uh, so we'll stick the wires in through here solder them on the back side. We also have the uh, display. So this is going to go again into the STM32. And we'll get to actually connecting the wires together. So what we're doing here first is measuring the distance within the component housing of each of the components to the five volt power strip. So we're measuring each of those, cutting wires to fit, organizing it. Now we're getting everything ready to wire just the power first. Now we're tinning each of the tips of the wires and soldering them into the strip board. Now this is starting to wire power to each of the components. We wired the ADS. Now we've done the dimmer and the thermocouple and off screen, we did the relay as well. Now we're just sticking everything back into the component housing. Now we're starting to wire up this number as well as the, the 12 volt to five volt step down. Now we're starting to measure the signal wires that are gonna communicate between each of the components and the STM32 through the expansion board doing some more tip tinning and soldering those signal wires onto the components. One of the things I learned through this process was that you really only need 26 gauge wire between each of the components within the housing uh, because it's all gonna be low voltage uh, no high voltage is carried in between the components in the housing. And uh, the 22 gauge wires, which I used to be more conservative, had a really hard time fitting through the holes in the components. So when I switched to 26 gauge for the signal wire, it made the whole process a lot easier. So here we're finishing up soldering all the internal components, making sure everything fits together, getting the display wire into the expansion board. So just got everything wired up in the uh, component housing. Let's hope all my solder joints are good and there's no shorts. I tried to really make sure that there was no connections, but um, we'll see. We're gonna plug it into the USB and um, I guess see what happens. I've hooked up the rest of the signal wires. There were a couple that I had not done. I have it where it's working now 
and the software powers up. It looks like um, definitely the thermocouple sensor is working because I could get some temperature readings out of that and it changed when I put my finger on it. And then I have my uh, SSR signal wire about to plug in and then I got it wired up to ground, but that should be every part of the internal component housing. So we're about to move on to actually wiring it up in the machine, adding the wires to the dimmer and the thermocouple. So here I'm securing the expansion board onto the component housing, reattaching the STM32, and putting the lid back on. Now I'm taking the top off of the machine. Connecting the SSR relay. Taking pictures for reference. Now we're removing the pump. Disconnecting the existing pump wires and marking them. Connecting those to the dimmer module. Now we're connecting the relay to the solenoid control. Making sure the snubber wires fit in properly. Now is connecting the high voltage wires into the power switch. So I'm taking the, the top two wires off and the bottom two wires off. Uh, the bottom two wires get piggybacked into the AC to 12 volt in the component housing and uh, everything gets connected back the way it was. Very important step right here is to use a multimeter to check what is coming off of the poles on the, the top switches so that you know that you're not connecting to the always live connections and you're connecting to the ones that become live when you flip. Make sure to thoroughly read the documentation that talks about using a multimeter at this stage. Now we're starting to take the thermocouple wires off, which will connect to the SSR relay, and that controls turning the boiler on and off. And now, creating the wires that are going to go from the extension and the ground to the switches on the front that control the steam and brewing functions. We're also moving uh, some wires to new poles. So the black wire goes on the left. And here's the moment of truth, turning this power switch on for the first time. First shot, I have everything all wired up, got it all working, and we're going to see if we can actually make some coffee. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So... We got the machine at 93. Um, I'm gonna hit the brew button. So now it's doing a free infusion. Ten seconds. That was a little high. 
Well. Oh, maybe it's gonna go now. Yep, there we go. Okay. So this blue line right here is representing the So it pulled a little bit more than I was wanting because <laughs> I was not paying attention. But we have a shot of espresso that came from the Gaji we know. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Thank you. 